From our perspective in uh, OICT and, and the UN, from a technology perspective or a data perspective, we value innovation, we value uh, new thinking, we value the idea of people coming together and working on initiatives like this. But I think what's also really important in that is a coherent approach that we kind of take together. And this is kind of the whole kind of concept of having a sort of standards-based approach so that we can at least work together and try to deliver on what we need to deliver together. Hi, my name is Eliasi. I am uh, uh, responsible for infrastructure uh, services in, in the OICT. Uh, uh, probably, uh, we're coming out of a budget meeting now, probably uh, uh, the biggest spender in the, in the United Nations when it comes to infrastructure. Um, I just want to uh, mention that uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit uh, sorry that I wasn't able to uh, participate the uh, whole day in this meeting, but uh, at the same time we are having um, uh, our first uh, Amazon uh, workshop with uh, Amazon Web Services uh, uh, group. And uh, interestingly, uh, blockchain came up as a, as a topic through, throughout our discussion because I, I feel that also uh, uh, major IT vendors uh, such as Amazon and Microsoft are also engaging in this, uh, uh, in this area. Uh, I also saw that Microsoft is uh, working on a framework for, uh, uh, for blockchain which was just recently published maybe a few days ago. Uh, so in terms of infrastructure and implementation of uh, this solution, um, uh, we uh, will definitely uh, support anything that comes out of, uh, of uh, maybe this forum or uh, Salim's innovation group, uh, as we see a big uh, value for our stakeholders across the world. That there is no uh, internal call collaboration between different organizations in terms of what the priorities are going to be. <coughs> and uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, over and over again, this comes up as, a, as an issue in uh, adopting any new technology. Uh, the uh, uh, Secretariat being one of the biggest uh, uh, organizational units of the United Nations Colon System, uh, probably uh, is uh, well placed to uh, uh, try to coordinate through the uh, chief executive's board uh, this kind of activities and uh, uh, as a matter of fact uh, in a uh, uh, few months ago I participated at the uh, ICT network meeting in Washington when there was a presentation on blockchain to CIOs of, uh, of uh, UN funds and programs including Secretariat. Uh, so, uh, I guess there is a there is a positive uh, move in that area, but uh, uh, I personally would like to see a little, little bit of more uh, uh, cross-cutting collaboration between different uh, organizations in every uh, aspect of blockchain. Thank you. So, um, um, I guess we'll invite questions as they come up towards the end. I'll just go through a couple of things. So, um, what I really want to do is. Um, I want to just provide a little bit more information on the sorts of things we do because I think they could be useful and applicable in the kind of whole blockchain discussion. Um, we kind of feel like um, whatever we can do from a secretariat perspective to kind of really bring people together to provide support and help and those sorts of things we're more than happy to do. So I just want to go uh, through a couple of things that we do in the um, uh, innovation group. So we have been working obviously on awareness of technology and, and, and just bringing people together. This is an example of that kind of forum. Um, we've also been working inside the Secretariat on trying to develop and define policies that govern these sorts of things. And I think that the, if there's a need for that, for the United Nations, and as Erzin mentioned, maybe the broader UN system, that's the sort of thing that we can also try to support. I think that kind of work is already on, ongoing, but I think trying to extend that and kind of really uh, kind of concretize it would be important. We have in the past um, undertaken ideation workshops and we continue to do that. Um, we're going to accelerate that and if that's the sort of thing that would be helpful for us to facilitate in the context of blockchain, because I think, I don't know about yourselves, I am A, not an expert in blockchain, B, I know it's very, very important, and I can't think of all of the ways in which it will be used. I don't think any of us can really think of all of the ways in which it will be used, but I think that coming together and thinking about those things and the sorts of questions that were raised will help us to kind of identify that. Um, we're also actively, we, we spend quite a lot of time prototyping. Um, not, 
not exclusively, of course, in blockchain and all sorts of different areas in technology, but it's the sort of thing that we've taken very, very kind of seriously. And I'm going to just talk about one of the ways in which we do that. And the last thing as well that's important is uh, partnerships. This stems from the Secretary General, his statements about the fact that, you know, the United Nations can undertake and implement its mandate to, to, um, alone. In fact, the idea of partnerships is written into the Charter of the United Nations. The very first words are, we the peoples. It's not we the building on First Avenue in New York, we the people, it's, it's everybody. So the partnerships component is extremely important. So speaking of partnerships and prototyping, um, uh, out of sync, oh, okay. you're out of sync, okay. So one of the things I just want to mention to you again is a thing that's available in the United Nations. It's not we built it, but it's not ours, it's the United Nations. So we built this platform as just one of the various things we do. It's called Unite Ideas. Um, I think the URL is there, ideas.unite.un.org. It is a platform where you can post challenges and have those challenges responded to by anyone. Um, it's been an extremely positive thing. Partly it's really positive because it really encourages outreach. Partly it's positive because there's a lot of smart people out there that figure things out a lot better than we can. We had this very, very, my favorite example of this is that we had this uh, electrification model that we built for Africa. Uh, the data set for that electrification model was taking 50 hours to compute each time. Extremely complicated data set. So we put a challenge out and said, hey, guys in the world, women, men, kids, do you have any ideas on how we can make this better? So a young student, was she a student? She's a professional. She was employed, highly paid. Employed, highly paid, the sort of person that we could normally afford or attract to the United Nations. Um, in her spare time, um, basically re, um, reconfigured that algorithm so that instead of taking 50 hours to compute, it was now taking five minutes. And she did it all for free. And the data set was provided to us by a very, very kind of, uh, one of the best Swedish universities. So whatever she did, that Swedish university was not able to do. The young woman from India and we kind of um, honored her and we had, had the S, uh, SG have a, a press release and she was very, very excited. And I think that's a really, really good story, not just because it solves a problem, not just because it helps with electrification, because it actually reaches out and engages with people. So I wanted just to spend a minute on this, just to tell you that this is one of the ways in which we can engage. We engage a lot with private sector, right? We have Google and Facebook basically telling us, well, who are you now? We've had 10 people visit us from the United Nations in the last quarter. Right, so, but, and we have a lot of public sector and a lot of academic engagement, but engagement with individuals out there in the world, I think that's a real opportunity for us. Okay. Yeah, I, I, Is there a technovation slide as well, or did we skip it? Uh, we did skip it. Maybe let me go back to that. Yeah. Okay, so this, I'll just, sorry, Arson, um, sorry, I'll just do this very, very quickly. Um, this is a Technovation result that we're all sitting in here today uh, uh, talking about. So um, Lambert's team um, and Orkia had this idea of trying to reach out and deal with uh, kind of frontier issues, frontier technology issues and bring people together around them to try and get some sort of common understanding. Just really quickly, uh, so this is the blockchain day. We have the crowdsourcing and gamification for humanitarian mapping um, idea coming up. Um, predicting human behavior, and then we have cryptocurrency explained. Um, so, so those are the sorts of things that we're doing more and more. Um, they're happening here in New York. They're also happening in Geneva and Vienna. This is something, again, I'm, I'm asking. This is not something where we want to be in the position of saying, hey, this is what we're doing, please attend. What we're really saying is, hey, this is what we're doing, please attend and listen. If there's some stuff that you really want to focus on or that you really want to support or partner with us on and really kind of showcase, let's do that together. Um, I know you know this, but the Secretary General has really emphasized the importance of frontier issues, frontier technology, cybersecurity, AI, blockchain, all of these things. Um, before I hand over to Erzin for the last slide, the one other thing I will say to you is that, just as I mentioned to you earlier, that I think blockchain is going to be fundamental to much of what we do going forward, and a lot of people in this room nodded. Okay, I can guarantee you that most people at the ASG and USG level, when you mention blockchain to them, they won't understand what it is. 
right? And that's not meant to be a criticism, it's just the reality. They've got other things to deal with. Now, I think it's up to everybody here to be able to convey that, listen, you need to pay attention. So one of the things that we uh, I'd asked Lambert to do was to do a kind of short version of the blockchain day for the senior leadership so that at least they can understand what it is and what the potential applicability is. So I'm going to end there and we can cover any comments or questions uh, afterwards. I would love to hear from you and I'll, I'm going to hand over to Erzin. Uh, okay, I'll, uh, I just have one slide. So I already start talking about uh, uh, CEB and ICT network uh, uh, activities. Uh, this is quite important. You and women presented uh, also at the CEB network. So I, I assume it's uh, going to be a similar presentation that they are going to do the, this uh, this afternoon. Um, we also have um, uh, this extremely long name for, uh, for, for the organization, which is Interagency Task Force for the Technology Facilitation Mechanism and the Science, Science Technology Innovation Forum. It's a, it's a mouthful. I, I, I'm sure that there is also an abbreviation, appropriate abbreviation for this. And then there is the UN blockchain community, which, uh, which exists also. Uh, now the question uh, is okay. So all all of this, what we what we saw today and heard today, it's all great and and fine. How do we actually make this work? And uh, uh, how do we put the operations around it? And how do we maintain it? How do we project manage it? How do we actually move it from the uh, from the an excellent idea into, into something that actually has a, a, a meaningful uh, life, right? and that it will be self-sustained in terms of uh, financially, right? Because uh, I saw through my, through my professional career, and uh, I'm sure Salim will agree to that too, uh, that there were many initiatives that started uh, uh, cross-organizational cross initiatives with, with agencies, funds, and programs, and uh, everybody's super excited about them, and then you hit the budget, and nobody wants to pay anything or put money into the into the common pot to to invest into this, and then uh, everything collapses. So um, this is a very uh, uh, real threat to this uh, to this innovation uh, work, and this is something that needs to be handled at the level of. Uh, uh, a chief information officers, if not higher than that on the senior management level. If there is no uh, a senior executive support to these initiatives, we won't be able to do it. Let's assume that that exists, right? And that, uh, that everybody agrees that we have uh, um, uh, a separate fund which will, which will finance these projects. Um, the other uh, uh, questions that a lot of people don't really ask uh, 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 is, uh, okay, so what's the framework for the for the uh, for the work of this uh, new system? What about the governance of the new system? What about the standards that we will be uh, introducing and accepting? Who is going to project manage it, and where is it going to be this platform be hosted? And uh, who is going to implement the platform, and who is going to operate the platform? So these questions are uh, are uh, obviously uh, very uh, important, and we need to uh, we need to address them. Uh, my personal opinion, a bit of a disclaimer there, so I'm not talking uh, at this point in time as, uh, uh, on behalf of OICT, but on my own uh, uh, behalf, uh, is, uh, uh, is that uh, uh, OICT and Secretariat has a, a sufficient uh, uh, capacity to support this. But uh, I have to be very uh, careful about what they, what they're going to say because I don't want that other partners in the in the room think that we are just like power grabbing uh, machine that is going to take now all the innovation projects in the block, blockchain area, right? Uh, but we do have and the uh, uh, and the uh, infrastructure and the operations and support that we are building now for the. Uh, for the uh, extensive uh, number of users that we have, as well as uh, uh, substantive programs that we, that we have, including our cloud uh, uh, implementation strategy for the Secretariat, gives us a possibility to uh, extend our uh, platform for the, for the initiatives such as this one. Right. And uh, um, uh, this is uh, obviously uh, project management and the rest of the stuff, implementation and so on and so forth, needs to, needs to follow if we want to make sure that this is done properly. Uh, so if I would be um, somebody who, who is making decisions, I was probably, um, and miraculously we are all on the same page, I would, I would probably pick five to ten projects that are really uh, 
excellent with a good business cases across the uh, United Nations uh, common system and uh, uh, and build the uh, uh, system build, build the infrastructure and operations on top of it which is uh, which is sustainable financially and then uh, we see what happens right and whether that has any any kind of uh, uh, implication to our core mm -hmm. business but we also shouldn't forget because that's that's the first thing that I learned when I moved to uh, um, uh, to New York uh, two and a half years ago uh, <coughs> that uh, uh, our uh, our partners or and our governance bodies, member states, also would like to know what's happening here because some of the contacts that they have with permanent missions in New York um, uh, actually show that they have also interest in blockchain technology and see how that's going to. Uh, work not only from the perspective of uh, UN is going to spend less money, but from the perspective of uh, how is that going to be working for the uh, uh, projects that are uh, that are be being implemented on the ground in their own areas.